Okay, okay, so step four of 14 steps to your Mickey box. So, um, if you're following the instruction manual, our original instruction manual, uh, there are a few deviations. Uh, we'll be doing the power board on this step, which is uh, not indicated in this step. And then uh, you also might see Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so for this step, you're gonna want your bottom chassis panel, the uh, pretty Mickey Fox logos and everything. Uh, you're gonna want your assembly that you've already done previously.
two of these. This insert uh, for the z-axis goes right there, and it should just drop into place. And then the power board slot right in there. Now you're going to have to watch your uh, your wires a bit as you're uh, bringing everything in place. You're going to want to bring this connector through this square opening here. So, just like that. And then, just carefully bring everything down vertically. You're going to want to make sure that these rollers fit into the slots that are right below them. And just push everything down vertically. Watch out for any, any wires that got smushed in between different panels or anything. And then give it a nice firm press. That's it. You successfully uh, located your chassis. Now, next easiest step is basically just turn the whole thing upside down, and you're going to take six of these guys. Sorry, four of these guys. Thank you. 
pretty well. So let's start with them there. Personally, I tend to put it a couple kind of in the middle just to keep basically to support this area when you have it turned over. Um, it's not necessarily like a specifically designed way to, to do all the feet. Okay, so that's. screw started until it gets close to the block. And then what you want to do is snug it right up to the USB connector. And then just firmly set it. This one, uh, you actually, it's Again, I, there's a limit because it is plastic, but at the same time, uh, you can uh, use a bit more force on this one. Because uh, this block is what's going to keep your USB connector healthy. Uh, so you do want 
uh, give it a little bit more smoothness. But you can see I'm using just a small end of this driver, so we're not talking a huge amount of force. Now, um, again, this is kind of going out of order of the instruction manual, but uh, at this time, I would tend to recommend doing the connections for the components that you already have in place so that you don't have wires everywhere. Uh, so you might want to skip ahead to step 11 for reference. And so you can start with the power connector there. Then I would tend to just pull the excess back through. And then, so, uh, motor connectors, it goes X, Y, Z from down here. So, X. Now, later on, you can bundle these up so that it's nice and uh, pretty, but I would wait until you have the uh, extruder here to do that. Um, this yellow wire, uh, no, we, we're going to try to be consistent with colorings, uh, but depending on if you can see them clearly or not. So basically, if you follow down to the limit switch. The limit switch that is pointing in this direction is the Y limit. So, um, just tucking it under the motor wires, and then it goes in the second position there. The white wire is the X axis limit. And it goes in the first position right next to the USB connector. And then the red wire is the Z axis. And it goes in the third position on this side, like so. so X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. All right. And that's pretty much it for, for these guys. Now, again, you might want to bundle these together. Uh, I happen to have some extra cable ties here. I'm going to use. I'm actually putting these on backwards so that they're removable. Just kind of keeps them together. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, the motors, even though uh, we'll, we'll need to redo this. Later on, for the uh, when we add the extruder, but I'm doing it backwards so then it doesn't lock on. Now, uh, we'll probably be including a few extra of these. There you go. So, okay. So I think that is it for step four. Uh, okay, so on to step five.